The next day I'm back to the grind getting my file ready for print. So I take the full res file and export it out of Lightroom as a 16-bit TIFF, where I'm then going to open it in Photoshop and do my resizing there. So I set the width and height in inches and the resolution to 200 pixels per inch because that's what my lab dictates on a print this big. Smaller prints, they tend to do it 300, but they want 200 on something this large. Once I have it resized, I do a final sharpening with unsharp mask. Now it's always good to do a final sharpening after you resize it because the settings for the unsharp mask are gonna be different depending on how large the file is. Once I've done that sharpening, I take one last final look through the entire picture to make sure I didn't miss any spots of dust. Then I save it as an 8-bit TIFF, verify the dimensions, double check them, and then it's ready to go off to the FTP. And we're off. So the file's on its way to Pro Photo Connection, uh, uploading via FTP. I'm going to have them do a proof print first, so a little 8x10 just so I can check the sharpness and the tonalities, make sure I adjusted it right, and uh, make sure I didn't overdo it on the sharpening or anything like that. Once I take a look at that proof, I'll give them the go-ahead on getting the full-size print made, and then uh, it's back to my office to put on the deckled edge, sign it before taking it to the framer. But uh, we got a few days here, so now I just wait in eager anticipation, and uh, I'll catch up with you when I have the print in hand. So I got my proof made uh, a few days ago actually, and you'll see it's an eight by 10 snippet of the full size print. So the print is ultimately gonna be 20 by 25 inches plus uh, an additional border around it. I was originally gonna go bigger, but I decided to scale it back just a tad. And the eight by 10 snippet here is full resolution. So the details I'm seeing are as they will appear in the final piece. So they give me a little snippet down here where I got a lot of tonal range and I have a lot of texture so I can really analyze if I sharpened it correctly and I did the adjustments correctly. And then up here they give me a little section of the main part of the Joshua tree just to make sure all parts of the photo are looking good. And uh, the proof looks really great so I told them to go ahead with getting the full size print uh, finished and that should be ready in a few hours actually uh, sometime today. So I'm going to pick that up a little bit later. But the tough thing about getting an 8x10 proof of a print this big is I always have a tendency to get really close to it and analyze it from really, really close distances because it's only an 8x10. But that's not a realistic analysis of the final print because the final print's gonna be much bigger. And when it's bigger, you view it from further away because it's not like you're going up to a 25 by 20 or 20 by 25 inch print and analyzing it that far away. You gotta analyze it at a realistic distance. So here, from this distance, it looks fantastic. When I get really close, it, it's easy to get disappointed because you can kind of make out all the areas where you sharpened and where it's a little bit out of focus or, or any of the little um, flaws in the picture. It's really easy to get too picky about it because you're getting so close to it. So when you're getting proofs made, make sure you're viewing it from a realistic distance. If it's an 8x10 proof of a 10 foot wide piece, you got to get it pretty far out for a realistic analysis of it. So I'm trying to get at the distance that's going to be reasonable, analyze it that way, and um, see if it looks how I want. But if the full-size print looks as good as the proof does, which it should, then uh, we're going to be in real good shape. All right, well, here it is. So we've got the print all finished. It looks great. Um, the lab left a nice big border on it so I could create my deckled edge. Um, which I've never created a deckled edge on a piece this big before. In fact, before this project, I've never really done a deckled edge at all. But I've been practicing on a little scrap of watercolor paper and I think I got the hang of it down. The concept of deckling is pretty simple. Basically, you flip the picture over and you score the back edge along the line you want to deckle. Uh, and you do it with the back side of a razor. So you get a straight edge on the back side of the piece, you drag a razor on the back side leaving just a score line. From there, you fold the paper towards the picture to create a crease. You fold it back away from the picture along that same crease. And then once you have that nice line in there, you're gonna pull the border off. You're gonna pull away from the print, not up away from it, but just side, like you're kinda splitting it. And it leaves this nice 
kind of deckled edge where it's real choppy and chunky and it looks like kind of older style paper. Has a great look to it. It's pretty simple to do, but uh, I guess there's always the possibility of screwing it up on something this big. I'm going to do this with the camera off purely because I don't want to be thinking about the camera watching me and I don't want to mess this up. But I'm going to turn it right back on when, we, uh, when I finish this and show you how the results came out. But wish me luck because I really don't want to mess this up. All right, so I'm happy to say the edge deckling was a success. So I didn't screw up, no major mistakes. Pretty proud of myself for that. And it came out nice. So here it is, finished final piece, the deckled edge. It's got a three quarter inch border all the way around. And I think it's gonna look real nice once it's float mounted in that shadow box. But all that's left to do now is sign it, number it, because it's a limited edition after all. And then it's off to the framers for the final step. Big day today. It's the moment of truth. I finally get to pick up the print for my framer. And um, it's a little like Christmas morning, you know, I get to bring it back here and unwrap it and hang it on the wall and see how it finally looks, all, all finished. And uh, going from conception to final finished piece is, is always exciting. And uh, I got it framed at a, my usual framer here in Orange County, it's Solomon Art, and uh, they're in Fountain Valley, California. I have no affiliation with them, but um, I strongly recommend them. I can't speak highly enough about Solomon Art. They, uh, they do a fantastic job, it's always perfect, and uh, great customer service and great prices too. But um, at the risk of sounding like uh, some arrogant photographer that's uh, overly pleased with his own work, I have to say, I absolutely love it. I think the deckled edge was a good choice. I really like the watercolor paper. And the float mount is awesome. I mean, the shadow it casts behind it just gives it so much depth and just gives it a chunkiness that adds a lot of value. So it really came out just as great as I hoped and actually a little bit better than I thought it would so um, that's always a great feeling and that's really what it's all about so happy it's hanging on my wall and hopefully it's gonna be hanging on someone else's before too long <laughs>